So at this conference, I presented the results of the Mona Lisa II trial, which is a phase three double-blind placebo-controlled trial of a CDK4-6 inhibitor, ribocyclib, in combination with letrozole. This was a study based on postmenopausal women with hormone receptor-positive metastatic breast cancer who had received no prior therapy. And uh, in a randomized trial that assigned patients one-to-one -to, -one to letrozole plus placebo and letrozole plus ribocyclib, and with a median follow-up of about 15.3 months, there was a, a major difference between the two survival uh, progression-free survival curves with, uh, that started with the first evaluation at eight weeks and continued to expand throughout the follow-up with a hazard ratio of about 0.56, representing a 44% reduction in progression events and the p-value that I don't have enough fingers to count the zeros. So it's a very uh, powerful therapeutic effect and uh, a, a powerful therapeutic effect that um, despite the extremely good performance of the control group um, will prolong progression-free survival by many months. The data are immature for the effect on survival but the data also show that the addition of ribocyclib to letrozole increases significantly overall response rate, clinical benefit rate, and of course, uh, progression-free survival. So I think the development of CDK4-6 inhibitors, and parenthetically, I've been interested in the field of cycling inhibitors for a couple of decades, and the first couple of decades was not terribly productive. These most recent uh, specific and uh, selective CDK4-6 inhibitors uh, have made a major impact on the field. So we have palbocyclib, we have ribocyclib, and we have abemocyclib, which is a little bit behind in development, but also uh, very promising. Uh, the Paloma 2 and the Mona Lisa 2 trials, I think, are paradigm changing. They are uh, practice changing because of the magnitude of benefit, because of the uh, very favorable safety profile, and the very limited uh, um, number of serious events. So I think these are changing practice. And as we expand the indications by completing additional clinical trials in other subsets of breast cancers, uh, they uh, will become um, uh, the, the treatment of choice for metastatic breast cancer. Now, having said that, if that occurs, and I'm very uh, optimistic that it is already occurring where uh, one of them is available commercially, it will move to the adjuvant setting uh, in the management of early breast cancer where there is of course an unfilled, uh, unfilled need that is uh, much greater in numbers.